Hey guys, welcome to the beginning of a Project Zomboid Tips video series. My name is Dragon Life, and I hope to cover everything from setup tips, surviving your first day, traits and occupations, safe house setups, and what I look for in choosing a safe house, as well as the various skills and all that. There are going to be smaller tips peppered in here and there along the way, things I've learned after 2,000 hours of gameplay, and I've been real careful not to take things that I think are simple for granted that you already know. So bear with me if you already know some of these things. I'm going to try to make this tip series as thorough as possible. So before we get started, let's set you up for success. So one of the most asked about things on my stream has to do with adding a highlighter to show which zombie you are about to attack. By default, Zomboid is only set to highlight targets when you're using a gun. To fix this, to where the highlighter shows for both melee and weapons, you should go into settings and select all weapons. Perfect! And if you're new, while I recommend a mod-free experience when you first start playing, one mod that I highly recommend is Craft Helper. Project Zomboid is a very deep game in terms of what you can do and uh, Craft Helper helps you discover what items that you find throughout the world and basically shows you what you can craft with said items. You can do this by simply right clicking on said item and if it is craftable it will pull up a menu showing what you'll need to craft said item. What playstyle should I try? If you're new in my opinion I think you should start with a modified apocalyptic sandbox. The reason being is that there's very little difference between survivor and apocalypse in terms of zombie population and sandbox mode allows you to tailor your game to your playstyle. Some of the more interesting changes to me are things like increasing the likelihood of the vehicle and zone stories which are by default set to rare. These stories add points of interest on the Knox County map. Campgrounds, police roadblocks, broken down cars on the side of the road, you have, uh, you have bandits as well as house parties. These are found on the meta tab in the sandbox. Another thing I change in almost every game is the infection mortality time in the zombie uh, lore tab from two to three days to instant. Although the rumors persist a bite is certain death and maybe it is because I play zombie daily, but I don't need the drama of wondering if the zombie scratch is gonna turn my character into a zombie. All that said, if you see the nauseous moodle combined with a bit of nervousness or agitation, well, the end is nigh. Finally, I recommend turning off Respawn for your game. Trust me, you won't run out of zombies to kill, and personally, there's nothing more gratifying than clearing out a section near your base. To do this, go into the Advanced Zombie Options and change the Respawn Hours, Respawn Unseen Hours, and Respawn Multiplier to 0, 0.0. Go ahead and carve out a zombie-free section of Knox County. Another common question I get asked has to do with occupations and traits. What are the best? Well, the occupation trait is strictly objective. I will say this. Go with an occupation that will give you the most bang for your buck in terms of your combat skills. Occupations like construction, which give you a level 3 in short blunt, or firefighter or axeman, which give you a level 1 in axe skills, are good occupations for beginners. Not only because you start with an edge for that particular type of weapon, but you'll get better faster with that weapon type. More on that when I get to combat, though. One thing of note here, burglar is a popular occupation because you can immediately hotwire cars. However, in my opinion, long term it doesn't pay off near as well and other occupations be because uh, anyone can eventually hotwire cars by leveling up their electrical and mechanical skills. As far as traits go, I recommend to absolutely consider either the stout or strong tra trait and or the fit or athletic trade. Although you can now work out in Zomboid to help improve your strength and fitness, making gain gains with both of these traits takes thousands of points to level up, making it a very, very slow process to improve on. And since strength determines how much you can carry before you are encumbered, and fitness determines how far you can run and fight, higher levels of both will increase your chances of survival in the early game vastly. Other traits to consider, which would be uh, combat traits that complement your character's occupation. For example, choosing Brawler if you have the Axe skill will bump up your XP modifier from 75% to 100%. Finally, choosing traits that you have a unique benefit attached to them is a nice move as well. Traits like Outdoorsman, Unlucky, Organized, or Dexterous are all solid traits in my opinion. One trait that a lot of newer players I will choose that I personally don't think is worth the points is thick skinned. As a comparison, a thick skinned person will die approximately 4.54%, while a thin skinned person is 10.54%. A normal skinned person is somewhere in between that. Just normal skinned characters fall somewhere in between, and considering the high cost involved, it's 8 points. Personally, I think there are better traits that would give bigger benefits. On the negative side, my tried and true traits are currently are slow reader, because you can speed up time. Weak stomach, because currently it is only a problem if you eat rotten or uncooked food. Prone to illness, because it only becomes a problem if you catch a cold. 
smoker because cigarette lighters and matches are pretty abundant in the zomboid universe high thirst uh, because there are a lot of sinks and toilets to drink from a slow healer because the debuffs aren't terrible unless you fracture something and finally underweight because there will be tons of high calorie food out there in the beginning Traits I tend to stay away from are the traits that increase panic, which ultimately decreases your character's accuracy and damage done in combat and make it near impossible to sleep. These include claustrophobic, agoraphobic, and he hemophobic. Although I will say this in terms of panic, the more panicked you are, the higher chance you have of knocking something down. Best cities to spawn in and starting out. Uh, Project Zomboid gives you four cities to choose from and each have their own unique flavor and degrees of easiness. In my opinion, based on this criteria, gas station proximity, warehouse access, zombie concentration, safest uh, safe house potential, ranked from easiest to hardest is Riverside, Rosewood, Muldrow, and West Point. I plan to tackle each city and highlight what I believe are good safe houses based on that criteria for a beginner player later in the series, but for now, if you get no further than this, you're, you have the best chance of survival in Riverside. Book it. So you just spawned in Knox County, what now? My first tips video two years ago basically advised you to literally grab everything. That advice has not aged well over the years, so what items should you focus on in the beginning? Well my short list is this, a weapon or two which will most likely be found in the kitchen, um, Bonus points if you happen to be adept in that skill, that particular weapon skill. Something to carry water in, especially important if you have the high thirst trait. One thing to note is you can now take a bleach bottle and turn it into a water bottle by pouring out its contents. A sack, satchel, garbage bag, or ideally a backpack to help you distribute the weight of the loot. Chances are good you won't find a backpack in your spawn house, but anything like a garbage bag or sack will do for now. Enough food for a day or two? Early on, literally every house will have food and there's no reason to get bogged down by these items. A side note, uh, canned goods are 0 0.8 in weight, so they can add up really quickly if you're loading down with canned food. Finally, a car. A car can double as both a place you can sleep as well as a place to store stuff. I can essentially be a safe house on wheels and it's probably one of the most important items to have early game. Now other items to take, uh, beginner or, immediate, or intermediate books, especially beginner books because reading them will give you an immediate edge with XP generation uh, for those skills and give you something to, productive to do late at night before bed. Plus uh, you want also want to do late, low weight items such as sleeping tablets, painkillers, bandages, beta blockers, and disinfectant. Can opener because all cans of foods requires them. Needles and or first aid kits and or scissors. Needles are pretty rare in the Zomboid universe but are important in terms of improving your clothing. We'll discuss this later in the series as well. Finally, a screwdriver and or a saw because both of these items can't be crafted. I know this sounds like a lot but chances are good you aren't going to find much in your spawn house and this is just a general list of things I look for in the first couple days of every playthrough. Oh, and I almost forgot. Make sure to turn on the TV and tune into the Life and Living channel the minute you spawn in. You can grab some easy cooking skill points just by listening while you are looting. While I'm talking about that, you can actually grab points on the range of skills for the first 8 days in game. The schedule times are 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. for the first 8 days. Should you invest the time? It's really totally up to you, but honestly it's free points. You can bypass several level levels of carpentry and cooking as well as add a level or two to trapping, fishing, and forging, and farming. On the other hand, keeping up with the time slots and being available can be a challenge, especially when the first week is so important. Uh, to getting stuff, you need to survive. So you can get the best of both worlds by making sure there's a TV turned on and tuned into the Life and Living show around that time. And while it may be tempting to fast forward while watching, be aware that you won't get all the skill points you could. So turn on, tune in, and loot while you while you watch or while you listen. <laughs> Another thing to note here is the times are tentative. In other words, if you miss the noon broadcast, you can turn on a TV at 2 o'clock and potentially still catch the show. Well, that does it for the first part of this Project Zomboid tip series. In the next installment, I'll cover what I think you need to focus in on the first week. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to like this video, leave a comment with any questions, and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. My name is Drunk on Life, and until next time, I bid you adieu.